Well, hello and welcome again, everyone. Um, my name is Philip Gibson. Happy Monday to all of you all. We will be, um, today we'll be working through courseware, accessing courseware. Um, and I hope this week is off to a great start. I know you all have been through Maestro 101 and, and Maestro 202. Uh, this is the curriculum component. Um, at this very same time, your k 5 counterparts are going through their session. So hopefully you will walk away with a lot of good information today um, that I think will be useful. Just to uh, move through um, our project and, and, and keep moving forward. First, I hope you all know that Edmentum is educator first. So everything that we do um, is focused on really helping you all to engage. I know that you all are, are, are very uh, experienced users. So I want you all to feel free to use the chat, to feel free to interject with questions as you have them. And if, and if you want me to speed up, please feel free to let me know, but I'm gonna try to go uh, at a pretty good clip uh, so that we can get a lot of things covered. Just a little bit about me. I think I've had the, uh, the, the experience of, of being visual to all of you all, but I don't know if you know who I am or what I do or why I have any relevance in this process. So my name is Philip Gibson. I am an education program manager. Um, I have been lucky enough to work in two positions with, uh, or, or two roles uh, with uh, Utah Online. I, I am helping to facilitate all of the moving parts of you all's implementation um, and transition. Uh, but I also uh, work with professional services, deliver service sessions that are appropriate um, as needed. Hence the reason I'm here today and, I, and, and I'm honored to be that. Just a little bit about me on a personal level. I joined uh, the Admentum team back in February, 2019. Um, I started my career in Atlanta Public Schools. Um, I became an instructional technology specialist way back in 1999. Um, I moved up over the student information system, a lot of engagement uh, at the, in the classroom and district level. Um, after leaving Atlanta Public Schools, I actually went and implemented the student information system in Clark County School District, Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, and I've worked uh, for a couple of different um, large uh, technolo educational technology companies, um, really helping to integrate uh, products into the classroom to make sure that teachers have exactly what they need to be uh, efficient. I'm married, I have two beautiful kids, my son is 22 and my daughter is uh, nine, both of them are getting old soon. Um, but those are my motivation pieces and that's what keeps me humble uh, in life. So that's just a little bit about me and who's speaking to you all. So what are we gonna cover today? So as, our, as we go through our agenda, um, I just did the welcome. We'll talk on our purpose and objectives. That's just the takeaways that you, you all should be able to do by the time we complete this session today. Um, I can give you at a high level, we're gonna navigate courseware. So I'm gonna take you um, through Maestro into courseware, how you will normally access it. Um, you'll understand the courseware platform. Uh, we're gonna manage curriculum and I'll talk a little bit more on a couple of these items, um, but flex assignments and course customization we're gonna to touch on those, but I'm gonna hold going in deep on, uh, in depth on those until next week. Um, I think it'll make a lot more sense when we get through the session today. We're also gonna look at a student view, um, see how the student will see the product, um, you know, from their side. And then again, we'll just kind of do a high level session overview of what next week looks like. And I can already tell you that we're gonna go deeper into flex assignments, collaborations, customization, um, and courseware reports. So. Um, I think it should be a fun field and, and, and really field day of information, um, but I think we'll, that you all will appreciate it um, by the time we come, get to the end of the session. Um, again, our five takeaways. Today, you should be able to access courseware from Maestro, uh, successfully navigate the courseware environment, and understand how to manage curriculum by course section. And I'm gonna use manage curriculum um, as I explain later uh, the difference between managing and uh, customizing because there are some similarities based on use case. Um, you're gonna understand how to monitor uh, progress um, and utilize the gradebook within, within courseware itself. And then again, as I stated, you're gonna experience how students will interact uh, with the coursework curriculum, excuse me, courseware curriculum. Very simply, um, we have simple technology. So some things that we will see today as we move through the system, we're gonna see our cus customization um, aspects and components. Um, you'll be able to see some data reporting elements for quick reference. We, of course, we have our course and unit activities. That's where you're gonna, you're gonna do a lot of your management 
uh, for your curriculum with your with your students or, uh, in your course sections. Um, and then we'll touch on flex assignments. And then obviously we'll go over the student toolbar because there are a lot of uh, support resources for them um, as far as um, type uh, text, uh, speech to text. Um, you know, we have a translator if needed, and we also have calculator and other uh, and guided notes um, in certain uh, courses as they need it. Just so you all know, I have a couple of slides in here. I'm not going to stay in the slide presentation. I think we should really be hands on. But but just a couple of things to know, simple technology, unit and course, we have a lot of different types of activities uh, where we have teacher graded activities where students were engaged. That's, that's what is the image that is displaying for you now is showing how students will be able to work through the tutorial and the mastery test and exchange directly one on one. The flex assignments will also allow you some expanded capabilities uh, on top of the curriculum that is provided in the course. You all will be able to add some additional resourcing uh, assignments as needed to support your student growth and also even uh, engage some additional PBL um, license, uh, excuse me, uh, PBL lessons as you move through it. Hits the slide that's up now. So we have our project based learning components. We have some that are already embedded uh, in the courses in the course curriculum, but you have the option to expand any scope or any class that you choose to work with. So any questions on just expectations. I don't think they're going to be a lot, but I want to make sure that um, We don't have any questions or is there anything that I have shown you thus far um, that is not meeting your expectations or anything that we want to look out for. And I do have just uh, as a side note, I have a I do have one of my peers joining me, Kia Devers. Um, she is going to be monitoring the chat um, for any questions that pop up as I go through the presentation. But again, uh, always feel free to take yourself off mute and interject. The next couple of slides are just very high level. Um, the the and this is just our, our basic course structure. I'm going to show you all this uh, when we get in. Um, but the course title, unit title. Uh, unit test, excuse me, unit pretest, module post test, and the, the semester end test. You're able to govern and monitor visibility of, of five of these. You can't, you can't really govern the, the course title because it is what it is. But all of these other five components, you're able to manage in the curriculum. And you will see that uh, when we get into the product momentarily. And as we drill down a little bit deeper, we now see that we have a lot more at play in our curriculum. So of course, we have every uh, module has a tutorial explanation, uh, some additional resources. Um, so you know, we have some offline activities, we have some drop box activities. Um, and then we also have a mastery test prior to getting to the end of semester test, you all will be able to when we get deeper into course customization, you all will be able to um, add any resources to the curriculum. Um, modify and or address any of these types of elements that you see fit that are not um, immediately available in the system. But that's uh, part of our course customization, uh, which we will touch on later. So right now, that's just high level. I don't like sitting in PowerPoint presentations when we're trying to learn. So I want to make sure uh, and see where we are. Um, is, is that too much? I want to double check to see if we have anything in chat. Kia, are there any questions before I um, transfer into our live atmosphere? Uh, yes. Sorry about that, Philip. Um, Heidi actually had a question about the for review button that was on the student view. Right. And she just wanted to know, could that be removed? You know, that's a good question and that I would need to ask the product team. As of right now, no. Uh, because what happens is when a student submits, the student has the option to submit for review. It depends on the exchange um, and re uh, and submit for um, for grade. Now you can give instructions to your your students just to submit for grade. Don't you, don't ever use review, but that is part of the normal process. I will double check to see if there are any modifications or any additional controls that can be uh, removed. But as of right now. Um, and it's not in every course, but as of right now, that can't be removed from their view in courseware. All right, thank you. I'm just noting that for you. Excellent, thank you very much. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to sign in. So, so the first thing we want to do is access the curriculum. So I'm going to log in uh, as a teacher demo to Maestro. Once I log into Maestro, now a couple of you may be listed as, uh, you, you may get a window before we get to this landing screen in Maestro, but you may be listed as a, as a counselor. You have to always choose your teacher login if you, ha if you are listed, I'm sorry, I'm saying counselor, listed as a coach. So if you have, a, have two or more options to access the Maestro platform, in order to drill down into the curriculum, you always have to select your teacher option. Once you have selected your teacher options, you're just going to go and click on your sections tab in the menu. From the sections, you'll get your listing of all the sections that are assigned to you. You can select any section, but you're probably going to go to the one that you're working in and monitoring, but you can select any section to drill down and, and end up into the platform. So I've picked the, the first section available and right up under the information, I have an uh, an icon that says lunch course. If I click on lunch course, that is going to take me into the uh, courseware platform. So before I move forward, I want to I want to let you all know a couple of things so that you understand, um, you know, as we move through and you see the functions and some of the things that are showing for you. In order, once you have done your scheduling in Maestro, all of the scheduling and courseware, all of the classes that are that the structure that's set up um, is handled by the Admensum and Implementation Specialist team. So all of this will be set up and populated based on course requests and approvals. There is no addition or modification to any section name, student that you will have to do inside of the platform. All of that will happen either by request um, to our implementation specialist to add you to a course. Your administration team knows how to do that. And the only other piece would be custom course building, which we will do through another method at a later time. But once you come in now, it's just going to be straight viewing the students that are already in uh, your courses um, in Maestro. So the first thing we need to do is just understand the environment and the platform that we're in. So the landing page that is our default landing page is called our Edmundum Sensei page. On this page, this is not really into the curriculum, but this allows you to get any alerts, any messages, any announcements that come from students um, through their work or anything that you need to address. There is another place where this will happen, but this will give you a listing of all the uh, uh, assessments completed if you have any um, assignment due dates. And you can sort by student, by date. All of that will be pre-populated. As of right now, we don't have any alerts. But when you get in and your students start working, all of that will be here on your alerts page. Across the top in the Sensei, we also have a menu bar. The menu bar allows you to have communications with your students within the courseware platform. Now you have messaging that's in Maestro and that is the messaging that you need to use first. However, there may be some times when your students ask questions via, um, via courseware and their product. This is where that communication will happen. If you choose to exchange communications with your students, um, you can do that here. And overnight, those communications will also be populated in a maestro. So you'll never have to duplicate the communications or worry that they're not captured uh, for visibility. But just know that this is another communication piece uh, for students directly related to the curriculum. You have a listing of students here. Um, there is a collaboration space that will allow you to work uh, with students across multiple sections and courses. We're going to drill deeper into that uh, uh, next week uh, in our second session. And then if you just wanted to come in to anything that was ready to score, so the question I believe from Heidi about ready to, uh, when students are ready to, uh, you know, ready for review or ready to score, this is where you would see any submissions that students um, have for you to, for your instructor to score. What I will go over and show you, demo teacher, teacher is my name <laughs> for the sake of this presentation, but up under that, there's a my profile button. As we move through, the only thing that I will tell you about this My Profile button that you may want to adjust is you do have the option to determine where you want to land when you launch the course. So as of right now, we come into the Edmentum Sensei uh, landing page, but you can determine if you want to go straight to students view, to messages, um, or if you want to go directly into the courseware platform where you go directly into content. So just know that you can land here 
um, and you can control where you land when you log in. Just reduces the number of clicks. Additionally, we have a help center. Now this help center, which I will reference now, but I'll show you later, um, this is where you can click on the help center we have all um, resources available for you to help you move through the system. At the very bottom, there's a support site. And in that support site, there's some additional teacher resources. I will tell you that we, I am going to go through the teacher resources and the help center in depth next week because I think we have more time and it'll make a lot more sense um, after we get through this session. So this is the Edmentum Sensei dashboard. So if you ever hear that, that's how it's referenced. Above the Edmentum Sensei dashboard, we have three options, um, three menu options. We will, we will have a course we're listing. This is how you're going to drill down into your curriculum. We have a flex assignments option, with, with, which we'll go into later, but this is how we can expand curriculum for your students. And then we have Exact Path, which is another individualized learning program, uh, which you all will be trained on on Wednesday. So, this is how you would access the courseware platform and all of the components that reside in it. Any questions on the Admentum Sensei before I drill down into courseware? Okay, excellent. And and I just wanted to clarify, Megan. I saw that you saw. So I brought up that some of you may be uh, may be listed as coaches. I guess none of you will be listed as coaches. So when you log into Maestro, there should not be any other option than for you to go in as teacher. So you can remove that uh, from consideration. Once we're into Admitum Sensei and we've logged in, we can now go up to Courseware and select the Academy Courseware option, and that's going to bring us to our uh, My Classes or Academy Courseware dashboard. Now, remember in Adminum Sensei, when I showed you settings, you could determine that you wanna come straight to this landing page. And so that's where you would choose Courseware as your landing page. But a couple of things, let's get familiar with the environment before we drill down into our course management. So here in the Courseware, we have three menu options, um, excuse me, two additional menu options. We have our menu up to the right and left, and notice it has the first four items uh, that are displayed on our dashboard. You also have access to the course catalog, reports, and classic reports. We will go through that momentarily, but the course catalog uh, basically is just a link that will allow you to drill down into the syllabus. You all will not manage um, or, or view the syllabus from there. I'm gonna show you another way to get there. From the dashboard view, we now have a My Course Sections, which is just the listing that is showing um, below, and I'll, and I'll go over that momentarily. My Classrooms. This option, unlike Sensei, where you can do collaboration, this option allows you to merge multiple course sections into one classroom. So if you, if you had, um, I know you all support by family, you might want to create two classrooms for one family or three classrooms, depending on the number of students. And you can uh, interact and exchange. However, the students are still uh, identified by their individual uh, uh, course sections. But that's just one way to interact with one family unit at the same time. Again, you have access to view your student data immediately who's available to you, much like in Admentum Sensei. And then again, you also have my active task. So this will show you all of the uh, responses that you need to give. If there are uh, activities that need to be graded, you will see that here as well. The only thing that you miss out um, that the Adminum Sensei has is, is you might be able to see locks and uh, different things uh, that need to be addressed for students. You will also see anything here that you need to address. Um, I will get into locks momentarily, but I just wanted to get the lay of the land of what we're looking at. So those are our menu options in the Courseware dashboard. And as we scroll down, what we should see is a listing of all the courses and sections that are assigned to uh, us individually as instructors. So I am going to scroll down to my first Plato course and notice a couple of things. First, I see Plato course, and I'll just start with Chinese, use it as a, as a course. Um, so this is the actual course title. Um, Plato course Chinese, and then the section title is below it. 
the section title is what you're probably going to make sure your students are in. That's going to relate to the most, uh, the naming convention that identifies you specifically. But if we click on the course title, drill down into the course, we now have a section dashboard. The section dashboard begins to show our students, but more than that, it gives us some additional resources as uh, instructors. The first thing we're going to do is click on this curriculum icon. The curriculum icon is going to allow you to view the syllabus and allow you some curriculum management uh, options when it opens up. It's moving a little slow today. Let, let's try to, okay, there we go. So now it allows us to open up um, the course and the syllabus that we have available. Notice that we will show, so when I showed you all that slide that had the course title, uh, unit pretest and post test, the first thing you can do is, let me just close some of these windows. I can look down and see that in this Chinese course, I have one unit, I have a semester, uh, one unit, a lesson. If I modify and close all of these out to the total number of lessons, apologies for it moving so slow. I can determine all of the elements in this course and how I want to manage them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to go through, and the reason I maximized because I was trying to open one unit at a time, but since there's so many, what I would like, if I want to see what a student is going to experience through this syllabus of this course, I can click on any of these items and they will open up for me as an instructor to view. So if I wanted to view any assignment that they see, I can launch it, I can launch the test, it will not be graded, but I have visibility into exactly what the students will see before I see it, before they see it. I also have some additional controls. So let's say that this course is set up uh, with introduction and welcome. I have a semester one unit uh, and these lessons that fall up underneath it. I may want to move my semester units around. Maybe I want to move semester two to semester one. You have the option to change the view of these set uh, of these uh, units depending on your needs. And maybe this wasn't the best uh, <laughs> class to use because normally it's one to uh, two to three units uh, per our normal traditional courses. But this is how you can move it around for view. So if you find that uh, you're progressing through some learning, um, you realize that semester three is best, you know, best engaged with students prior to moving to semester two. You can move those items around. Um, you also can move individual units below it around simply by clicking and dragging. As you all get in, you will have the ability um, to, to go in and play and see how you can move and reset these courses. What you also have over to the right side of the screen is you have some controls on each element of the section. So whenever, just to give you a little view, a little heads up, whenever we see these three ellipsis points, that means that we always have some options there as a as an instructor that we can perform an action. So I'm just going to click on this and I notice that by each folder, by each assignment, I have the ability to lock, hide, and omit. So the first thing and the most important thing that I hope you all will write this down, maybe put it on a post-it note and splash it on your, uh, on your computer. You all will never omit an assignment from here. You will never omit it. Um, I will tell you that because courseware works hand in hand with Maestro, we don't use omit because Maestro is set for pacing. So let's say that we had 10 assignments or 10 activities that a student needed to complete. If you omit one of them in courseware, technically that student will never show as completing that course because you will have removed one of the 10 
And, and if, if they did all the work that was remaining, it would show that they only completed nine uh, assignments. So there is a process that you all will use for omit. I will draft this and share it, but I'll just verbally go through the process of omitting. In order to omit, what you will do instead is that you will hide the unit. Hiding allows um, you to control what the students see from their view. So once you hide, um, once you hide uh, the, that uh, area, that unit, or that assignment, um, the students will no longer see it. It's kind of a non-issue. Hiding does not remove it from the grading. So if you choose hide, you have to also do another step. We're gonna drill down a little bit later and I will show you, but the next step will be to exempt. You will have the ability to an exempt a grade. Um, and so you're gonna exempt the student from that grade. And then when we get into the, um, when we get into the grade book, you will need to enter just a number in that grade, a one, I'm gonna show you all this and we're gonna do it. Um, you just enter a number one in that grade just to show that it's populated and exempted. And that is the process for omitting a grade. Again, I will share that documentation with you all, but you all will never use omit. What you might use is the lock unlock. So you can also lock what students see. So in this, chi uh, this Chinese course, we notice that there are, and I didn't do an accurate count, but let me scroll down. We notice that there are um, nine units until midterm. Maybe you would like to go and lock all of the other units that are not midterm if you want to govern. So all you need to do is click on the ellipsis points, click lock all, and you could lock semester 10 and all of the remaining, I'll go ahead and save the changes here. You can lock all of the remaining semesters. Now you will have to select lock by unit. So once I've locked semester 10, I would wanna go and repeat those steps for all of the additional units. What happens is it will allow your students to see that they have more work to complete for second semester, but it will not allow them when they log in and launch their course to begin to work um, on that work unless you control it. This is at the curriculum management level. I will tell you that you will have the ability to lock and unlock students also in um, the curriculum content based on individual student movement. But this is the, the, probably the, the way you're gonna use lock uh, in most instances to govern your classes. And you can always come here and unlock. And again, any, any changes that are made in the curriculum details are made for all students that fall up under this particular course and section. So any questions just on curriculum management um, I know I said a lot uh, regarding the uh, omit, uh, but any questions around curriculum management? We do have a few questions in the chat. Okay. So the first question that we have is, if we change the view, can we rename, renumber the titles so that they show in numerical order? So that, that, let me tell you, that's, a, that's an excellent question. Um, no, you cannot from this view. Uh, when we get into custom courseware, uh, excuse me, customizing courses, you will be able to rename and review. This is nothing more than repositioning. So in curriculum management, um, in the curriculum portal, you cannot change the names or, um, or the titles. You would just rearrange what the students see first. Great question. Okay. The next question is about locking and unlocking. Mm -hmm. So if it's not locked, does that mean that the students have free movement in the units? Yes, yes, that is correct. So what you will see when we get into the student view, um, the students will be able to see all of the content. And if there's no governance on locking, they can move around. So a student may choose to go to unit nine uh, and start working there before he or she progresses through unit one. Um, and so they have freedom to, to launch any activity. Some students do it, some students don't, um, but that is a governance issue. I will add one additional thing. Um, I didn't go deep, uh, well, I didn't show you. Let me, 
let me just open up and speak through this one. So we talked in the preview about a lesson, having a tutorial, uh, a pre-test and a post-test post and a mastery test. So the students have to perform at 80% or above on their mastery test before they move to, through the next unit. Um, on those mastery tests, you do have the ability um, to determine the number of attempts that they can take on that mastery test before they are automatically locked out. So this is where you would set it for the class. So if, if a student went in, got a 60 on the mastery test um, uh, on his or her first pass, they may go and take it again. After they take it twice, you may want to have, or two or three times, you may want to set the unlock mastery test or, or automatic lock of mastery test to two or three. That way you can monitor where they're getting stuck, make sure they don't spin their wheels um, over and over again, and they continue to move forward. And this is where you control it. So I'm sorry. Kia, there's an, was there another question? I thought I saw something pop up yeah. in the chat. Yeah, we actually do have uh, a few more. Okay. So can, um, when you're locking specific things, can you lock them for specific students or just yep. for everyone enrolled in the course? So that's an excellent question. So only in the curriculum settings, um, this is, this is where you lock it for everyone. I'll click done. When we go back into, uh, when we go back into our section detail, I'm going to show you momentarily. You can also do it at a student level. And you have some more options there. So it can be done, but only when you go into the curriculum for the whole section, any adjustments, lock, hiding uh, that you do there will be done for all students. Just as a scroll down, when I come down, if I select a student, then I can drill down into the student, which we'll do momentarily, um, and I can lock, hide specifically for one student at a time. And so if it is locked, will it automatically open when they finish that unit? So great question again. So if a student has locked him or herself out of the mastery test, they have to go back through the tutorial. Uh, once they go back through the tutorial and the lesson, that will automatically unlock uh, the lesson for them. Excuse me, I'm sorry. That will automatically unlock the mastery test. Completing the tutorial and the lesson will automatically unlock the mastery test. Another question is, can you lower the passing threshold for individual students? For instance, if you have students that are uh, within special ed? So no, you cannot lower the threshold, but yes, you can apply credit for them. You can either uh, exempt them from a score so it doesn't include it, or when we get into the grade book, uh, which I'll show you momentarily, you can, um, depending on your rubric, assign them a grade that would be uh, satisfactory. So if you, so if you had uh, special ed students um, that were performing uh, at a certain level, you can keep that grade, or you can enter an 80 that would allow them to move through uh, certain elements. So going back to the lock and unlock, um, if the teacher has said as, a, as a locked, when the student gets through the coursework, will it automatically unlock when they get there? No. So if the, that's a great question too. If a student, uh, if a teacher sets, um, if a teacher sets the curriculum level to be locked, or even at the student level to be locked, the student will have to notify the teacher. So the student can send a message or will say, hey, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Gibson, or if, well, if I was a female, it would be Mrs. But uh, if, if they were saying, hey, Mr. Gibson, uh, please unlock this course for me, um, th there would be some notification to trigger. Now, keep in mind, uh, any students that are automatically locked. So if you were to set the mastery test to lock after a certain time, that would be one of the alerts that you would get. So you would see a listing of locked and unlocked students um, as they move through the as they move through the course in your alerts, both in the Sensei and in uh, and in uh, our dashboard here up under my active tasks. Okay, and the final question that we have is actually from Megan, and it is around teachers receiving their login. When will they receive their login for Edmentum Course Field? So. For the course build. Okay, so the course build, Megan, that's a great question. Um, those logins we're going to try to have set up for next week. So, uh, and, and let me just make a little mental shift here and give a little background for everyone that's on the call. So, because of how uh, you all are using our platform, you all actually will be doing course customization in another account. 
you will not be doing your course customizations in the live um, account that we're in right now. So we're gonna create another uh, Courseware platform that will allow you to build courses. Once those courses are built, there will be all the same content. Once those courses are built and constructed there, um, they will then be copied out of that demo site and uploaded here uh, into your live production site. Because if you remember at the beginning of the call, um, I told you that our implementation specialists at, at Admentum do all of the setup of your courses in order to make sure that courseware links uh, most appropriately with Maestro. So once those copy uh, courses are copied over, there would be back end work done to set you all up uh, with your sections and all of that in sync to Maestro. Um, and it'll be seamless, uh, but you all will be logging into a, another instance and you will get those logins next week. So that'll be next Monday when we get into uh, custom courseware. Hence the reason that's gonna be um, our session, one of our main session two topics. And those are all our questions for right now. All right, excellent. So we went into course curriculum and, and before I go into the student level curriculum, I know we had some great questions. I just kind of wanted to go over the dashboard that you see. So remember that you can also send a message directly uh, with your students here. You can also see the messages. Um, section settings are just default settings. You will not go in I mean, you can, but it's just be view only for you. There's nothing that you can control. After we go through our dashboard, we'll come back to Gradebook uh, because there are four key functions that you can do in the Gradebook. Pretty simple, pretty easy, standard Gradebook stuff, right? So what we're looking at, so we talked about at a curriculum label, uh, level, locked, unlocked. So what we see here is a listing of all our students. Now in this section, we only have one, one student and we know that the student is off pace. How do we know that? Because all students would be the sum of all the students. So if we had 10, this number would be 10. If I only had one student that was off pace, he or she would show here with a man running backwards. And the other numbers would align for all of these other students. If you wanted to just isolate the students that were on pace, for example, all you'd have to do is click on that, uh, uh, that uh, icon and it would isolate just those students. If you wanted to isolate just the off pace students, you would click on that icon and it would only be the off pace um, students. Now in this instance, since we only have one, that's the only one that's showing. This will also show you the students that have been locked. So even if a student locks himself or herself after, out of a mastery test, um, this is where that information would show. And again, anything that's ready to score, remember we saw this in three places, right? We saw it in Admentum Sensei, we saw it on the uh, dashboard for my active task. And here in each specific section, you will also have ready to score. Moving down, now we see our, our students. And let's just do a quick uh, update. So this is our student name. We'll be able to drill down into more detail around the student. Our current grade and our course grade. I know there is a request for actual grade. Actual grade will not be here. So the only thing visible will be the student's current grade. Uh, and here's a her course grade. We'll also see the total number of activities in this course. And if we hover over, it'll tell you a start and end date for the student. It'll tell you the days remaining in the course. It'll tell you the activities completed and the pacing goal. So if you just hover over here for demo uh, US student TD, what we're saying is this student is 17 assignments behind his pacing goal. And, and this is the pacing that links one to one uh, with Maestro, and this is what drives that. This will tell you time on task, um, and then it's the number of tasks completed. But this will tell you how much time the student has actually spent actively engaged in activities. It doesn't mean that they, they could have been logged in the system for an hour, uh, but these are specifically once they have opened up and triggered an activity to work through. Again, remember I told you anytime you see ellipsis points, you always have these options, um, additional options for you. You can send message from here. You will never reset a password. You will never edit start and end dates and you will never apply past progress. You will also never drop the student from the section. Uh, that will be done through Maestro and a back end process. The reason I show you uh, these ellipsis points is because we do have some course reports that are available. And this is how you would see by student course progress, learning daily, daily usage and learner progress. I am going to show you all how you can find this information for reports uh, today in quick reference. But next week, we're gonna go in a little bit more detail um, uh, on reports 
Um, but you feel free to play and, and, and drill down into them once you get access into Courseware. I'm going to drill down into the demo student. And I think this is a question that came up momentarily. So just like we saw uh, the curriculum that we can govern at a section level, we now can govern the curriculum by student. And not sure why the system is moving so slow, but it's moving slow for me. I will tell you that by student, you get the exact same options that you had uh, at the course uh, section curriculum control, but you also have some additional controls here um, for the student, which I'll show you all momentarily. So here we go. So I've drilled down into my student, and now I see a couple of things. So I can look and see, okay, this is what this, how the student is moving. So notice a couple of things here. Notice I'm starting to see some color coding next to each unit. Whenever I see half circle full, that means that that unit or that is still in process or that assignment is in process. Anything that has a, a full circle has been completed and, and anything that's empty has not been started yet. Notice that I have statuses. So anything that was locked or hidden at a higher level would show here. Anything that is automatically locked because a student has uh, maybe trumped uh, or triggered a lock if you set that, that would be here. Anything that, a student, that, that has been exempted from a student, we'll do this in the grade book momentarily. All of those will show here and display. Again, you will never see anything from the omitted column, so this one should always be blank. What you will also see, this is how you can begin to monitor what and how your students are moving through the curriculum. So this will tell me the number of tries that a student has attempted to go through one particular element. Um, two is not that bad of a number. Maybe a student got kicked out based on time. Maybe a student had to stop and come back um, and it reset in some instances. But what you would want to do is monitor the amount of time uh, because sometimes students get to their mastery score, you find, I mean, their mastery test, you find that they score below um, and you realize that all they've done is spent 20 or 30 seconds in the tutorial or the lesson. And so they're trying to cycle through. So, uh, and I know that's not all students, but that's just a scenario uh, that I'm using. Once the students complete uh, the activity and get a score, it will be listed in this score column. And anything that's there for you to review will be listed here. And you can click on view. And it will take you to the, the, the review of that um, assignment for, for you as a teacher. Again, we see ellipsis points. So understanding the layout. If I click on a, uh -oh, if I click on ellipsis point the right way here, notice that I get all the same ex the, all the same options that I have from curriculum management. Lock, hide, exempt. So from by student. This is where I can exempt a student. So for those special ed students that came up, there may be some content uh, that those students do not need to uh, you know, complete or partake. You can exempt them from the assignment here. So remember, um, we talked about um, if we wanted to omit an assignment, the first step was to hide it. And you can do that at the curriculum, le curriculum level or the student level. The second would be to exempt it. So this is where you would come to do the second step in that process of omitting uh, would be to exempt. And you could do it by student. Um, you'd have to exempt by student. You can also, um, if the student had completed some work, you can also come here and reset. So if you needed, if a student had a, a bad experience and you needed to reset their activity to start from scratch, you can also um, reset the activity. And then you also have an option to view the history. So if a student um, had, had tried, let's say, five tries, you can view history, and you'd be able to see all of the progression and work that went into this specific activity by student. So those are the options there. At the student level, we have all the same view. This weekly progress, I will tell you, this weekly progress uh, is nothing more than a, a data visualization. So if you clicked on that by student, it would just show you um, the amount of time that a student was on by, by a bar graph. And I'm clicking on it, but it's going super slow for some reason. And it's actually not even giving me the option. So not sure why this is going so slow, but I apologize. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So it's going to give you a bar chart 
it'll just kind of tell you the trends of weekly activity when you click on it and it'll go by uh by week to week time on task that's all you really get from that it's just a data visual you may want to use it but i don't think so between maestro and uh your movement in the course probably not going to be one thing you know a button that you click on too much so that for the most part is how we would navigate and manage student curriculum uh, or curriculum at a student level. I apologize, I'm experiencing some script issues. I don't know if it's my web browser or my login. So I'm going to click done out of this student. I'm just going back to my screen. And now we're back to uh, my course section. What I'm going to do, let me see if I can find another course that is uh, may have more than one student. So um, an additional piece too, you all have exact path. You're going to go over on Wednesday. It will show here uh, for you, but this um, this is not the way you're going to go into exact path right now. But we can go over that uh, at a later time. Let me scroll down to. Let's see. Well, no, I guess all of these have uh, one student demo in um, that have been set up. So after we've drilled down into our section, I'm gonna click on Gradebook. So we went through the curriculum. Remember, we went through the curriculum details at a section level. Uh, we went through the curriculum details at a student level. And now we're gonna go through um, the curriculum um, through the Gradebook. So real easy, there are only four functions that a teacher can do uh, in the gradebook. Uh, one is entering a score. So when we talked about entering a score for a special ed, you can enter it directly just like you all, um, just like you would any other gradebook. You can drop a score or, or drop an activity for all students from their grade. You can drop an activity from, or drop a score, excuse me, for an individual student. And the third thing is you can create an activity to be scored. So you can create an, uh, an activity and wait it. And we'll do that last, but let's go over the first three. So remember when we talked about exempting? So if we looked at the step of exempting a student um, instead of omitting, we would hide the, hide the activity. We would exempt the activity, which I did not do. Let's, uh, let's do one, let's do one. So for this demo student, The first thing we would do is, we don't want them to do this Plato student orientation again. So the first thing we would do is we will hide it for the student. We will exempt the student from it. And notice these icons populate. Once we've done that, click done. Now when we go back to the grade book, that information should populate. But you know what, it won't because the, uh, <laughs> it won't show because the orientation is not graded. What would happen is you would see the exempt icon, but what you would need to do is you would need to come down and drill, click on this link, just put a one in for the grade. I'm gonna apologize, I'm gonna go back and walk through that. I should have picked this first activity. So let me, let me walk backwards one more time. I'm gonna go down into, this gray, into the student. And this is if I wanted to omit this activity for the student. The reason I put the grade in is because you can do it in reverse. It'll also show up. So anything that's manually entered will show up. So the first thing I really wanna do is hide this activity for the student and exempt this student from the activity. Make sure that I click save, click done. Now when I go back into the grade book, this is the process that will allow us to exempt and you see what happens. So um, you have the E up to the upper corner, it will be removed, uh, the students won't see it, they're exempted and they get 100. The exempt does not factor it into, into the total grade. So the first thing, entering a grade. 
notice a couple of things. If a student was working through, and, and this student doesn't have any data, as a student completes his or her assignments or activities, anything that they score would be populated here without this circle around it. The circle around it just means it's a manually entered number. It says altered score. I hate that term altered because uh, it seems like it's, it's something negative, but it's a manually entered score. If you had a special ed student that you wanted to give credit uh, for an assignment, you could type in 80 and give him or her that um, 80 score. Now notice that when you're exempted, now notice how it affects your current grade versus your course grade. So this exempt, um, and it should be, shouldn't be 100, should be one. So the exempted score should be backed out of the current grade. And for right now, it's not happening. So, but it will be exempted at, um, oh, you know what, I removed the exemption. I apologize, I, it, it automatically changes it to 100. I put the one in uh, after the exemption, that's why it's regulated, it will be removed. So technically the current grade would be 80 uh, and the course grade would be somewhere in the, in the realm of that. Um, let's just remove this right now for the sake of calculation purposes. Give them 100. So the more you wanted to enter scores, and just like any, um, any grade book, you can enter scores. Anything that's identified is in circles. Now, let's say that there's an activity that I want to cancel or drop for this student. So I don't want this 50 to affect my student for whatever reason. All I need to do is click on that box, just like I did to enter the grade, and I can drop the score. When I drop the score, I get this pink box that says that this student has a drop score. What if I wanted to, instead of exempting this entire activity for um, this one student, I may want to drop the entire activity, the, the entire score for the entire class. So once I do that, if there were more students in this class, I would see that the activity title has been highlighted in pink and everything below it has been uh, highlighted. And notice that the averages um, are now, all those numbers are removed from the averages. If I scroll all the way over on my gradebook, I also see here where I have some optional activities. So this is the last of the four things. So the first three things we could do is manually enter a grade, drop a score for a student, drop a score for uh, an activity for the class. We've done those. In order to manage activities, there are a couple of things. We're gonna go up to our settings at the top of our gradebook. We're going to go down to manage optional activities. Now, here's what I will tell you. If you are going to create or assign additional uh, optional activities for um, grading, you would need to go up to your categories and weights, and you would need to add a weight for that graded activity. So you see these are our default weights. Um, you may have a graded activity. Let's say we make this 5%, and let's say that... Um, we only want our unit activities to be 25, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I can't count, 15%. 15 and that's how we'll balance out our total grade. Save the changes. We could name the activity there if we wanted to. So um, you all may have, and, and I shouldn't have closed out, you all may actually have um, a number of times that you need to engage with your students. So let's say that, you, that one of your activity is, um, you know, Teacher, teacher engagement. Maybe that's the higher level module. Um, and we'll save these changes. Once we've done that and we scroll all the way over, now we have that teacher engagement options here and we can give it a score. So we can say, okay, if the student was supposed to engage with the teacher 10 times, he or she only made it nine times, we're gonna score them at 90. You may or may not do this, but once you do that, now you can add that score, depending on the weight, we see that it's calculated to the current grade and it's populated in for optional activities. You, have, you, could have, you can also change this optional activity score if we had gone to weights uh, and categories to assign it. I'll go back up to settings. We can give it any, any name we want to. You can do this up to three optional 
activities and you would weight them individually. So you would say uh, teacher, I think I named it teacher engagement, right? Teacher engagement, 5%. So Kia, I see that the chat box is going off and I'm about to slow down on the gray book right now. So any questions around the gray book so that we can walk through or address any concerns? We do have one question. Um, it says, if you create an activity or have an activity that you would like to be extra credit for a student, can you set it as extra credit so that it automatically adjusts the student's grade? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, and you know what? Uh, let me double check to make sure, because I and, and Megan, correct me if I'm wrong. You all have uh, submitted to us your grading scale structure, right? It's not the same that we currently use. Are you using um, our existing um, grading scales? No, I have submitted um, different grading scales. Right. So, so yes, you can do it. Um, I don't have visibility into those grading scales that have been uploaded, not in this course. Um, what I can do is I can make a note of that question, and next week when we come together, I'll walk through based on you all's grading scale. Does that sound fair? Is that acceptable? Yes. Sounds okay. good. Excellent. Any other questions, Kia? No other questions. Uh, a comment was made by Heidi that it is similar to their system that they use now, so it makes right. sense to them. Okay, excellent. So I'm going to close out of the gray book. Um, and right now, I just want to, um, there are a couple of things I want to show you really quickly for the sake of time, because we're, we're running close on time. But are there any questions about accessing um, courseware, accessing the curriculum details, and accessing your section and your student data? Any questions? Okay, so real quick, I've, I've referenced a couple of things that we're going to touch on next week. I'm going to go back to my menu bar. Um, at the very bottom, we have a listing of classic reports. So remember when I showed you that if you click on those ellipsis report, uh, ellipsis dots, as you work through your course section, you get these options of reports. With the exception of the gradebook reports, because the gradebook reports are in the gradebook, um, you also have a listing uh, of classic reports, and you will notice that most of those reports that you see are also here. I can tell you that as you all get in and start to explore, the learner daily usage report, the learner progress report are probably going to be the reports um, that you pull the most frequently uh, so that you can really see by time, by module that the students are working in. I'm going to close out of that. There's another reports option here. Again, we'll walk through this the next time. These are reports that if you wanted to schedule, there are three options. There's a gradebook report, a weekly progress report, and a, um, and a course detail report um, that will allow you to schedule recurring reports. So if you wanted a report sent to you on every Monday, you could do that. Flex assignments. Flex assignments allow you as a teacher, they, and, and you can create flex assignments outside of a class. The flex assignments will allow you to create a flex class, put different students in that. What a flex class is, is extra credit assignments. They see it in their normal view like normal, um, but it's, it's just extra work to get them to a certain level of expertise and experience. Um, you can assign assignments, number of students, and you can share these flex assignments depending on how you want to support uh, and expand the curriculum. And in exact path, again, we will go over that when you go specifically into the training uh, this week. But these are the items and elements. Flex assignments will go in detail next week. It's very similar to course customiz uh, customization, some of the same type of movement. Um, and, and recall, so it'll be a real easy process, um, but we'll go into that and use best best cases. Now, what I want to do quickly is I'm going to sign out, and I promised you that I would give you the student view, and I want to do that quickly. So maybe this will make uh, some sense when we get to it. So if I click on my demo student, and he or she will log into uh, Maestro, just as you will. Now, instead of going into a section directly, once my dashboard comes up, they will, they, this is their landing dashboard. This is their maestro dashboard as to, as to what they will see. Um, if they scroll down, they can pick the course 
that they most want to view. I think I made the changes in the uh, English um, course. So let me click on this. But as I scroll down, if I'm a student, I can pick the course I want to launch. I'm going to launch my English six semester course. When I launch, this is the student's dashboard view of courseware. So everything that you saw do at Minimum Sensei, this is how they see it. So notice they have options to see all of their work. That can be assignments that are due across all of their courses. This is where they would do messaging. They could take notes and exchange notes, or excuse me, not exchange notes. They can take notes here. The collaboration space, which we'll also go over next week, this is where they would do all of that co collaboration. And any rewards, any achievements that they make would be visual here. As they scroll down, notice any section that they're enrolled into, they will see all of these listings. I'm going to scroll down. Notice we'll see all of the same courses that we saw. Um, I believe this is, the act, uh, this is the activity here. So I'm going to scroll down to this particular section. Uh, notice that the Plato course title is here. This is the section title here. This would show them their current grade and their course grade. And then they can click on Select New Activity. When they click on Select New Activity, this now takes them into the coursework that we were managing. So they will see their syllabus to begin with. When we talked about the ability to lock and hide, this is what students can do. Students have, if you don't lock or hide, they have the visibility to go into all of their content. They will see what they've mastered. They will see the score that's given. Um, they'll, it'll tell them whether they're complete or not. But a student can also go down to semester four if he or she wanted to and open up any of these tutorials and work through it. So they don't necessarily have to go in order. That's one reason that you may want to lock and monitor, but you may not. Uh, different students want to move through. What I will do is launch a tutorial quickly just to show you a couple of things and let me let me just mute that out so as the students go through the tutorial they also have a toolbar so we referenced this in the slide presentation but i wanted to show you what was available in their toolbar within the tutorial within each section they will see the table of content uh table of contents uh oh Let's, uh, let's just pause this. How about that? Thought I did. So they will see the table of contents based on their lesson and what they need to uh, complete. They have an option to take notes, capture notes, save notes when they come back in to review. We also have resources and guided notes. So here they have guided notes. And if they click on those, these can be printed out. But this will walk them through lessons and tutorials uh, of what they need to capture as they go through it. They also have a dictionary available to them. I mentioned to you some of those support uh, resources, maybe for some of your special ed or remedial students. You have text to speech. You can click, um, you know, you can click to speak as opposed to, to typing in a response. We also have our translate. Now, let me say this about the translate. Uh, the translate does not change any of the information in the lesson um, to a foreign language. What it does do is it just converts um, their responses and or any information to them into the uh, language in which they choose here. And then they have um, a highlighter. So that is what the student experience is. So I began this section, so I'm going to save and exit. What a student will also see when he or she has begun, and I, I, I intentionally went down to unit four, it should change to in progress. Not sure why it didn't. But once they start and begin to move through, it'll show in progress. Notice that the end of semester test is locked. So this is what they would see in any locked activity. So if you locked any of these sections, they would see it, but they would know that it's locked. They would need to trigger a communication. And in a very short and brief experience, uh, that is the student experience. They can always go home and navigate their way through. So Kia, are there any questions around, um, did we run into any questions around the student um, dashboard?
Uh, we do not have a question around the student dashboard. We do have a question around uh, locking though. Okay. Okay. Um, so the question is around, do we have suggestions of how most schools or some of your partners handle the lock and hide? Uh, for this team, in the past they've had their units locked and for students to go in in order to, an order so that they can get a passing grade and then it automatically opens. Just wondering, what would you suggest as the best possible way to approach this? So that's, a, that's actually a good question. So what I'll tell you is that, and, and maybe I, I know this came up earlier when I said if they complete a test, if they lock themselves out of a mastery test, they can unlock that test going through uh, the tutorial. If you lock as an instructor a unit, they can't just automatically progress through work and when they get to it, unlock it. You would have to unlock that for them to in order to work through it. So if you if you were in the curriculum detail and you locked the work, they would have to communicate to you to say, hey, I see it, but I'm able to access it. So I think the initial part of the question was how do other districts uh, use it? In my experience uh, with Admentum, um, most districts use it by unit. So if you wanted to restrict a student from, and, and I'll be honest with you, in, in some of these courses that we use, there are like three or four units, maybe like an algebra course or, or English course, um, they may lock like units three and four because they want teachers to monitor and know when students get to a certain point. So normally, and, and I use the example, I do believe as I got it through, like midterm, for example, not really trying to govern students' movements, getting ahead, but when they get too far ahead, you want to make sure that they're not so far ahead that they miss a piece that's critical because they need to maintain that um, knowledge and that consistency to get to the end of course test. So in most instances, the lock at a curriculum level is by unit, and that is for teachers to pace the students to make sure that they don't go too far ahead. Um, and the only time, only other time that they lock is they may lock pre-test or post-test. Um, you know, I wouldn't really ever lock a pretest because that's placement, but you may, if you're tracking students, if you're really doing some intervention uh, with some of your students, you really may want to lock a post test just to make sure that that data is absorbed. Depends on the level of engagement you have with students. So those are the two examples there. And I hope that answered your question. Any other questions, uh, Kia? No other questions. All right, excellent. Well, one, um, I just wanted to, I did tell you that I would give you a high level. So I can tell you that next week when we come together, uh, one, I'll have an answer uh, related to the extra credit uh, and the best practice for that for you all. Um, we're going to go into course customization. We're going to look a little bit deeper into flex assignments uh, and collaboration. All of those are small, quick things. But um, hopefully, you all will be able to get into courseware, kind of move around. Please bring back questions next week. Um, we do have another week that we can come together that can be straight q and I'm thinking that uh, next week we'll be able to, to go through um, the remaining elements and do Q&A. Uh, but it's totally up to you. I want to move at your pace. If you, if you run into any experiences when you uh, get into the system, please let me know and let's talk about it. Um, and you know what? I thank you all for giving me the extra seven minutes. Um, but if you don't have any other questions, um, I will let you go, and I hope that you enjoy uh, the rest of your week. So are there any other questions before I let you go? Okay, thank I don't see. Thank you, Philip. And then just a reminder to the teachers, we are meeting in our staff meeting room right after this. Thank you. Thank you all. Be well and stay safe. Thank you, Philip.